Greetings fellow travelers of the stars. Today we embark on a journey into the immersive universe of Star Citizen. I invite you to join me in this exploration. In the Star Citizen universe my journey often begins with a simple act of accepting in-game contracts. The beauty of the game for me lies in the organic nature of its storytelling. What starts as a straightforward mission can snowball into something completely unexpected. And so I strap into my ship, my vessel of exploration and intrigue. I dive headfirst into these contracts, fully aware that within each mission lies the potential for emergent gameplay that transforms a digital experience into an unforgettable journey. For today's adventure, I'll be hopping into the nimble and versatile snapship, the C8R Pisces. The C8R comes with a tier 3 medical bed which is like having a mobile clinic. We're fully equipped with medical supplies to handle whatever the universe throws our way. And yes, that includes flares and even some chocolate and drinks to keep the space explorers spirits high. It's all about being prepared, versatile and of course, having a little fun along the way. From tight maneuvers to a medical bed that's ready for action. This ship's got it all. And we've landed onto the frozen surface of Yila. As soon as the ramp opens up, BAM! The temperature drops to a bone-chilling minus 44 degrees Celsius. So there I am, bundled up like a space explorer version of a snowman. I mean, I've got my armor on, I've got my gear, but even that's not enough to stop the chill from creeping in. But hey, no time to let a little frostbite slow me down, right? I'm on a mission, and it's time to get my Sherlock Holmes on. I start scoring the frozen landscape. I spilled for any clues. The urgency is real, and let's be honest, I'm not looking to turn into a human popsicle out here. So with every step, I'm not just battling the cold, I'm battling time. I know one thing for sure though, I'm not about to let Yella's icy grip keep me from completing my mission. And then, after what feels like hours of searching, I spot it. A lifeless figure lying amidst the ice and metal. I know that I found what I came for. The lost crewman. As soon as I confirm the identity of the crewman, credit starts rolling in on my account. It's like the universe itself is rewarding me for cracking the case. The universe isn't letting me catch my breath just yet. I've accepted a new contract. And this time, we're headed to Yela's asteroid belt. Our mission? Locate a missing ship. And not just the ship itself, but also the crew members. Or at least, was left of them. So I hop back into my C8R and off we go through the asteroid belt. After I reach the ship's last known location, I disembark my ship and the search begins. And let me tell you, finding those crew members in the weightlessness of space is like a game of cosmic hide and seek. It's like they're playing their own version of astronaut tag. After some zero-g somersaults, I manage to locate each crew member. And finally, mission accomplished. No disoriented space ranger here, just a lot of floating bodies and a sense of accomplishment. After the icy grip of Yala, I feel warmed up and ready for some action. I travel back to Olisar for a short stop to switch to a ship better suited for some fight. This time I hop into the Avenger Stalker, a sleek interceptor that was designed with combat in mind. It can punch pretty well above its size. So what's next on the menu? High threat beacon. Now I'll be the first to admit my dogfighting skills might be a bit rusty, but there's nothing like a high stakes challenge to help me get back on my feet. It's me and my NPC friend here versus a constellation Andromeda and an Anvil Valkyrie. The Connie takes the spotlight first. I'm trying my best to maneuver my ship into its blind spots while slowly working my way through its aft chills. If I can manage to chip away the defenses, I might be able to cripple the engines and turn it into a sitting duck. It might not be an easy task for me at the moment, but as the combat draws out, I can feel the doorman skills slowly resurfacing. After successfully destroying some of its hull, I find it a lot easier to dance around it. But this thing is far from being harmless just yet. Finally, one of its engines is gone. I move in for the kill. And in some seconds, the Andromeda is nothing more than floating scrap. Now, onto the Valkyrie. It's a big target, slow to maneuver. And its hits feel like tickles compared to the Constellation. This one is more like a walk in the park. 
After a brief exchange, I bring it down, turning it into nothing more yeah. than a salvage opportunity for someone else. I'm left with a hunger for action that only a good old-fashioned bunker mission can satisfy. So, I chart a course back to the icy embrace of Yella. Touching down on the planet's surface, I position my ship right at the entrance of the bunker. Descending with the elevator, I step into the building, only to be met with enemy forces engaged in a skirmish with the local security forces. I quickly hunker down, taking cover as laser fire and bullets crackle. After taking out a good chunk of the enemy forces, I start to push deeper into the bunker to neutralize the last remaining enemies. I cannot help myself but to check behind my shoulder at times. You can never know when you run into another player on spots like these. Once the last of the attackers are down, I waste no time and start looking for useful gear that I can put to good use for later adventures. I want to bag and tag everything as fast as I can. It's not ideal to stay in these one way in and one way out bunkers on the long run. My next target is on Selin, where I'm greeted by the sight of a literal scrapyard consisting of destroyed player ships. Way to go, bunker paranoia. Nonetheless, I'm not turning back now. As per usual, I descend with the elevator, checking corners. And once I take my first shots, oh boy, am I in for a ride. Enemy NPCs instantly start to swarm on my position. Most of them are just target practice, but some of them actually get a good jump on me this time. Eventually, most of them fall, and I start sweeping the area, looking for a few still standing. After making sure I'm the only one alive inside, I channel my inner loot goblin and gather the goodies. Then, head back to Portal Isar. Mission accomplished. It's time to reward my hard work with a new look. Motivated by my new drip, I decided that it's time to get my bounty hunting license. So, in I go to the Avenger, off we go to Microtech. At my target's location, I offer a quick renovation of his ship, whether he wants it or not. Just in time, because here comes a rescue beacon. I'm lucky enough to put my hands on it, and it happens to be on this planet. Lucky me. So, with a small amount of containium in my tanks, I make my way over to this person in distress, then use the bunker's own tower to get up close without any turret fire. As per usual, I descend and try my best to take out enemy NPCs while looking for possible ambushes from other players at the same time. I'm trying my best to offer quality service time to this gentleman, but safety comes first, and I'm not reviving anyone with hostiles still present. Eventually, there's a pause in the action, and I use the opportunity to pull my lazy friend here to cover, strip him of his weapons and revive him. As I said, safety comes first. Take care, man.
Once certain that my client doesn't require more help, I make my way to the nearest landing pad to refill my quantum and head back to Olisar. But it seems like that this is my lucky day. Another rescue beacon comes up and I'm unable to say no to the possible outcomes of such beacons. Let me hold you to that thought here. This fella seems to be in trouble in New Babbage. It's a no-fire zone, so I wonder what could have gone wrong there. Anyways, for this mission I'll take the train right to the business center. I quickly rush to center mass to find This awesome person informs me that he probably sent the beacon by accident. And he even pains me for coming nonetheless. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and maybe even tell me what was your most random experience so far with rescue beacons in the comments. See you in the verse.